Um, so we used uh, part of the implementation that uh, Semantics is doing for GraphQL, and we created a tool to test an API with GraphQL, and we call it GraphQL. We didn't find a better name. <laughs> Um, we did, we did develop a tool with a technique so that we can uh, we can test a GraphQL API and generate automatic tests from the from <coughs> using the type system that GraphQL provides. Um, if we think a little bit about how we how we do write integration tests in GraphQL uh, for API testing in normality to rest of GraphQL, we do like a little framework and we do. A request to our server with the tools like Cumber, the unit, uh, as unit, and all of that. And we develop a little framework behind that so that we don't repeat ourselves. Um, this tool is to complement that, not to eliminate that uh, writing of integration test, but to complement that in order to run this uh, tool in an early stage of development and find holes in your implementation of GraphQL. Uh, but, not holes. Uh, so, uh, we developed this little technique after that we call the deviation testing that measures the difference between the initial test case that we will provide and the, the, the variations that we will create from that, that, that initial test case. So, as I said earlier, the goal of this is to print the coverage and find potential bugs in our implementations of our, our GraphQL API. Um, so, work, the workflow on this technique is like this. Here we have four steps. The first one is receive an initial query from your data. Um, a query that uh, Andreina showed before, something like that. The second part of this is uh, apply deviation rules over that simple query and amplify those test cases. Uh, and amplify that test case. So we would, for example, if I have one initial query, we would have potentially five, ten, or thousand uh, more queries that we would run in the server. The third step is to execute uh, the initial the, the initial query and execute all the variations that we generate. And the fourth step is compare the initial query result and the variations for the executed results. Uh, looking in that difference uh, of data, we will see if this uh, if this was a okay response from the server that the test would pass. If not, if the data is not the same, uh, it's, not, it's not a success from the initial query, or if it returns 500 errors or some kind of server error, then let us lose it. Uh, the deviation rules that we created were four. Uh, the first one is the field selection deviation. In the left, you will see a query that will return a list of fields, uh, a list of fields with name, rating, gender, and character, as uh, a data of the one. And in the left, you will see one of the deviated queries that we created with the field selection deviation. Uh, we can, so from the field selection deviation, we can create thousands of combinations and permutations of the fields. We just go play around randomly. Um, one of them is the one that is in the right without the director field. So, as we said in the workflow, we will execute the initial query and we will get a full result of this. In this case, we will have two movies. And we will execute also the deviated uh, query, and we will have another set of results. And the first step of the workflow, as, we, as I mentioned, we will compare the results. And, the, and, and how we validate that this test, this test should pass or should fail is comparing the data. If the data is a, if the result of the deviated query is a subset of the data of the original query, then the test will pass. If if the return of the deviated query is an error or doesn't contain the same data, then it will fail. Another uh, deviation rule that we created was the empty field deviation, and this is based on the standard uh, on the specification of GraphQL. GraphQL says that at least uh, one field should be selected when you are doing a query. So if we select all the all the fields like we are doing in the left, what should happen? If GraphQL expects you to return uh, an array of errors that at least contains one error. If your server doesn't return an array of errors, it just returns 500 or crashes or returns the full stack of errors, then your test will, or test will fail. If not, if it returns the, the right that we are expecting with at least one error indicating the problem, 
then the testing class. And your, and your API is following the standard specification of GraphQL. Another uh, deviation rule that we did was the non-null deviation, uh, which focuses more on the arguments in, of the queries instead of the fields. In this case, uh, the query on the right, on the left, <laughs> sorry, uh, on the left, it will retrieve a field uh, with an ID one that has a, a field name, rating, gender, and rate. And, and instead of that, we will deviate that query and we will uh, send them a family. And we should expect an error. And if your server doesn't return an error and just crashes, uh, and it happens, the tool will stay. And the last one is similar to the non deviation, but we play with types. Instead of sending one number, we will send an string. Again, if your test if your server doesn't return an, an array of errors without this one ever, the test will fail. These are the four deviation rules that we write, written initially uh, to test the compliance of your GraphQL API. We developed a small page that maybe I can show you. Um, we developed this small page um, that in this place we put your URL from your API, um, whatever you can have. Here uh, we put your initial query with your own data. For example, in this case we are testing Yelp and we put uh, and we want to retrieve businesses, one business with a, a specific ID. If you have fields, you will send your ID of your field that you know that there is in your database. Then uh, we have three buttons on the, on the bottom. So this test connection, start testing, and rerun tests. Test connection, basically what it does is uh, ping your server with the initial query that you put there and returns the data and input, input it right here. As a result, if it responds uh, 200 and an array of data correctly, then we assume that that is your beginning data set. And after you can start testing, run the test, and we'll uh, run all the tests applying the deviation rule that I mentioned, and we'll generate a full set of tests that were run. Each test uh, will show you if it failed, the query that was executed, and the result, the response body that was sent. In this case, uh, Yelp failed it when we sent an empty field selection. It just throws some 500 error with an H12 500 value. It doesn't respond to a standard GraphQL error. Um, so, um, besides Yelp, we run uh, two more uh, case studies. One with the small with the small talk that Semantics is implementing like parts and everything for GraphQL in small talk. And they are they written a demo application so that they have an API and we run it against that API. Uh, we have in that one 48 tests run it and tests failed. Uh, the failures were related to argument types, so we send the different types to their arguments and the server just crashed. <laughs> uh, same thing with empty, empty field selections. Um, in Yelp, we have five, five failures, the ones that I saw you uh, that, I, that I show you. Uh, about the empty field selection, it joined the 2500 errors. And the follow demo API, uh, it actually runs pretty well. Uh, it, uh, it has the full compliance of the GraphQL specification. Well, at least the ones that we test with the deviation rules. Uh, so, our future work basically is add more deviation rules because we miss a lot. <laughs> we just uh, write for the test uh, or theory. <laughs> um, also support multiple initial queries. Multiple initial queries is important because what if we want to test different use cases? For example, in the case of a field, we want to test when we retrieve a field with one director and we want to test if a field that retrieves with multiple directors. That's, uh, that's the idea there. Uh, in conclusion, we write this tool uh, so that we can complement the integration testing that we have already with some tests that we can generate from the system type that, with the type system that uh, GraphQL provides and generate them automatically for free. And also we can run them at any time on the development uh, process. 
uh, and it will show us where we are missing some things of the specification. Uh, we run the tool against three real applications. Well, maybe the small talk is not that real <laughs> yet, uh, but uh, eventually it will be. And we found actual bugs in our implementation. And that's pretty much it. I'm not sure if you have any questions. About those tests that fails, is it supposed to convert and uh, write the real test cases in this model for the which the others are Sorry? Uh, you detect some errors. Yes. So, uh, is it supposed to take the output you have as a report and write real test cases in, in the language? Uh, yeah. Because this is like external test cases. Yeah. Right? It's like snow. So, you to convert it into test cases in the language where the... Yeah, that's pretty good, I believe, yeah. But we don't do yet that. We just show the error and fix it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it to fix it. 